Hey folks, Jimmy here, aka Pallet of the Dead. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the latest issue of Warhammer 40k Imperium magazine. Now it's been a little bit, but, but. Hey folks, Jimmy here, aka Pallet of the Dead. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the latest issue of Warhammer 40,000 Imperium magazine. Now, as per usual with all these videos, if you like them, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course, drop a comment down below. I love hearing about from you guys and it goes an absolute massive way to help the channel too. Now, this week we're on issue 52 of Imperial Magazine and we have our first half of the Triarch Stalker from the Necron range. A pretty big kit. The second part comes next week. Uh, really, really cool though. It's a really, really nice looking mini. Uh, fantastic, uh, pretty much uh, a really, really good elite unit that you can utilize in your armies as well. Uh, very, very handy to have on the battlefield. Uh, but yeah, pretty damn cool. Uh, as what I'm probably going to do, and I think most other people probably will, um, I am going to wait until next week before I actually start building any of it because it could be a bit of a pain in the backside if you're trying to build it and you haven't got everything ready for it. So. We only have a couple of the front legs and we only have the part of the body and a couple of uh, other legs in there, which isn't a fantastic amount. We could definitely do with the rest of the kit before we get going because so far we have, yeah, only part of it. So, but yeah, really, really good stuff. So make sure you keep that safe for next week uh, and then you can get the whole thing built in one go. Into the issue, we are greeted by the battle record page for the Triarch Stalker. So, a bit of background about the Triarch Stalker. So, piloted by Triarch Praetorians, the eyes and ears of the Silent King, Triarch Stalkers oversee the Necron nobles and their legions using their own firepower to ensure the Necron race always emerges victorious. So, these have some pretty cool bits of equipment linked to them. For instance, the Stalker has these gigantic forelimbs, which are articulated limbs that are robust enough to also be utilised as crushing weapons with which to destroy foes. They also have this awesome quantum shielding, which appears almost completely invisible and only flickers into life just before the moment of impact against it. They also have pretty cool weapons, so for instance, you have three main weapons that you can choose from for your Triarch Stalker, depends on which one you want to go for though. So the one in the image is the Particle Shredder. So this is a Particle Shredder which is a weapon perfect for destroying enemy infantry from range. You can also, if you wanted to, use the twi Twin Heavy Gauss Cannon. So heavier version of the Gauss weapons carried by Necron Infantry. The Gauss Cannons are lethal anti-infantry guns. Or you can utilize the heat ray. So some Triarch Stalkers, it actually has a misprint there with Triarch Talkers, uh, are fitted with heat rays. These weapons emit focused or dispersed heat to destroy their targets. So they can use a focus beam most of the time uh, that can destroy, say, like an individual target uh, you know, very, very quickly. So, for instance, you might want to use a focus beam against any other heavier. Uh, unit, so for instance, as a tank or a rhino or even any of the walkers, you might want to use the focused beam. For instance, could be used to kind of punch its way through them and uh, smash them to pieces and blow them up and with heat. Or you could use the dispersed if you're using it against a group of enemies. So if you're using it against, uh, say, for instance, a squadron of assault intercessors. You could use that to try and uh, essentially melt them all in their ceramite armor uh, because that would be lovely. Um, the Triarch has also has this advanced relay targeting system. So, the weapon, way the weapon system works, it feeds targeting data to nearby Necrons, which lights up targets for the nearby Necron units to then destroy and stuff like that. So, you can kind of use it to kind of uh, essentially focus fire in a way. Of course, you get your main battle record area as well, so you can name the Praetorian. You can also give the Stalker its designation, uh, and then you can over kind of record your victories that you may use with it, and any kind of major plot points as well that you can use in your game. So really, really cool stuff, uh, and pretty damn cool as well. So really, really cool. And then we get some information about one of the other factions, so the Questus Imperialis. So 
the Imperial Knights, or Questers Imperialis, as they are sometimes known, are pretty damn cool. So, Imperial Knights are these ginormous, uh, mostly ginormous, robotic walking suits of armour that are pretty damn cool. They include things like the Warlords and the Titans and stuff like that that you see for the different factions of Space Marines. Really, really good stuff though. They are absolutely fantastic, very pretty cool, and they have some pretty cool weaponry as detailed on the second page. So they have some pretty cool ranged weapons. So for instance, the Avenging Gatling Gun, Iron Storm Missile Pod, Rapid Fire Battle Cannons, uh, Storm Spear Rocket Pods, Thermal Cannon, so essentially a big massive flamethrower, which sounds amazingly fun, and uh, the Twin Icarus Auto Cannon, if you wish to as well. And then they also have a pretty cool uh, bit of a melee weapons as well. So they do have things like the Thunderstrike Gauntlet. And they do also have a massive Reaper Chainsword as well that can be utilised to them. So for instance, if you wanted to, you could have the Chainsword and one of the, uh, say like the Auto Cannons or something similar to that. Literally to tear through enemies as well, which are pretty damn cool. Uh, but yeah, really, really good stuff and quite interesting at the same time. Then we get some information about more of the Necrons. So this is all to do with the Triarchs themselves. So, the Triarch are the right hand of the Silent King, tasked with overseeing the Necron nobility, preventing intersign conflict between dynasties, enforcing loyalty of wayward nobles, and ensuring that their legions adhere to the ancient codes of honour. So, Long ago, before biotransference, the Necron tier race was ruled by the Triarch, a council of three pharaons. The leader of his triumvirate uh, was known by the Silent King. So, the War in the Heavens, which occurred during the reign of Sarech, the last of the Silent Kings, saw the near annihilation of the Necron dynasties and the forced altered Necron race into a millennia of hibernation. And, you know, the Triarch Pharaoh Praetorians were then equipped with the finest war gear, armour and weapons. And it was their task to uphold the laws, codes and teaching of the Triarch as well. Uh, and, you know, making sure that the dynasties don't fail in their uh, the aims which is really, really cool. So it gives you a bit of backstory about the Triarchs and the way that they are utilised. So the Triarchs themselves do also come in kind of a couple of different forms. So there is the Triarch Praetorians. So these once served as the bodyguards and enforcers of the Triarch. Now they serve the Silent King once more. Triarch Praetorians are dispatched to every awakened tomb world where they ensure the ancient codes are adhered to. At times of war, the Praetorians observe battles uh, observing the Necron foes uh, to judge if they are deserving of the Triarch's respect. And then there are the Triarch Stalkers. So these are the mon monstrous walking vehicles piloted by Triarch Praetorians. Uh, these vehicles are prized assets to any Necron army. So really, really handy to have and uh, yeah, pretty damn cool at exactly the same time. Then we get our how to build section pretty chunky how to build section as well because there's quite a lot going on here so you can start building some parts of the sub assemblies i personally i'm gonna wait so the idea is if you build sub assemblies so you can make it putting it together a lot easier because if you are trying to put it all together at once i'm not gonna lie it's gonna be a pain in the ass but doing it in sub assemblies will work absolute wonders so for instance if you go for the weapon the kind of the seat or pilot's seat and shroud and then your the, the actual body of the Triarch Stalker uh, separately, then you'll have a really, really good time with it and a bit easier as well. So for instance, the seat actually has quite a lot of parts to it, that seating area with a Necron Pharon in the side of it, uh, quite a lot going on there. Then you have the main body. So the main body is actually fairly simple in some ways, but then as you go through the legs, the legs become a little bit more complicated. Uh, and there are areas that you probably don't want to glue. So for instance, where the joints meet, the actual longer legs, it may not be worth kind of gluing them in place just yet. Uh, with the back legs, they all actually have um, kind of pre-molded legs. So you don't actually have any kind of control over them. You just have to kind of make sure you're getting them into the right places in all honesty. Um, so they balance pretty well. 
and then your front legs you can utilize that so you can actually move them around a little bit if you wish to uh, entirely up to you though but if you have them moving around you can slightly change their poses if you wanted to with the weapons fairly easy as well if you wanted to and you have the uh, confidence and the skill you could always uh, try and create magnetized weapons i personally don't think it's worth it because you are stuck with just mainly one part there which is magnetizing all of that for three different builds is going to be pretty much impossible but pick your weapon carefully so whichever one you prefer could be a, a game changer in the long run so really, really cool stuff uh, personally i might go for the heat ray just because i like the sound of it uh, and it could be quite fun and then once it's all built and you've got your sub assemblies you can start building and kind of connecting it all up with your soot just make sure that you're placing it on the contact points uh, and gluing them down if you've pre-painted all your sub assemblies as well it might be worth making sure that you have not painted into the contact point areas because if you have the paint can stop glue from working properly and uh, sometimes it looks a little bit rough and a bit rubbish if you have bits of glue kind of peeking out from different areas as well so you don't want that but really really cool stuff and quite an enjoyable build from the looks of it as well then in our rules section we do have a kind of an introduction of how to use stratagems so with your stratagems to use a stratagem you have to pay the cp which is command points that are used to kind of pay for it essentially um so the same stratagem cannot be used more than once during the same phase and stratagems not used during a battle round are exempt from this limit of course as well so pick your stratagems easily depending on how you want to utilize them uh, you can have a bit of fun with them but really really cool stuff but you can't use them during the battle phase you can only use them uh, in certain sections so make sure you're utilizing the stratagems themselves and this tutorial uh, so as you gain command points as you go through uh, which is cp of course um, you will gain and be able to utilize your different stratagems as well so this tutorial kind of shows you how you can go about doing it but really really cool stuff and pretty good fun as well then we go on to our battle for the week so our battle is a stronghold assault so we have attackers and defenders uh, and you are utilizing two of the battle mats placed together three objectives to push in the middle and if you are playing as a necrons you'll be using the plasmancer two canaptech crypto for alls one canaptech reanimator 10 necron warriors three scarab swarms and another set of three scarab swarms if you're playing as the imperium you are utilizing mostly your sisters of battle so you're using your canoness seven battle sisters three seraphim one repentia superior three sisters repentia two arcoflagellants one penitent engine and then three aggressors as well so you have a pretty heavy force on either side really, really cool stuff and quite fun so you have to dominate the battlefield and hold key positions in order to turn the enemy back and gain victory points out of it five rounds have a bit of fun with it yours to enjoy lastly on the back page we do have our command point tokens if you want to utilize them as well in your battles uh, entirely up to you but you know if you glue onto something card and cut them out you can get them really really cool next week though we get our second part of the good old triarch stalker uh, we also get the painting guide for them and how to utilize necron strategies stratagems as well uh, but yeah really really cool stuff then issue 54 we get our final section of the our good old uh, adeptus sororitas we also get their stratagems and new mission as well really really cool stuff now before i go a uh, quick bit of one this will not be the only video of the day uh, there will be a second video later on because um i finally had issue 45 turn up so i'm going to do a very late issue uh, video of that so yeah why not so i'll see you soon bye bye now